Hello and welcome to Watercolour for Beginners again and we're looking at colour mixing once more because in episode 4 we looked at uh, mixing like the popular colours, the colours that are just beyond the realm of the £12 travel set but today we are delving deeper in and we're going to cover a big old page in all the mixes that we can get from that £12 travel set. So um, grab your paints and paper and we'll get started. Okay, so here we have a grid that I've already drawn out, um, just with a pencil and a ruler. And I have looked at this palette and gone, instead of doing a colour chart where we have every single colour along each side, I prefer to look at how the really dominant dark colours at this end, the bluey tones, work with all of these because you can absolutely uh, have a look at mixing these colours together but I find if you look at episode 4 where I had a go at mixing various colours together um, I found this a really good exercise but when I want to look at a chart as a whole I just find what we're going to do today a much more useful uh, experiment because there's a point where you do a chart, you put all the colours along the side, there's going to be tons of them that they sort of match up the same and there's a whole load of colours that are very similar. Um, I'm not saying don't do it like that but I just prefer painting this way so we all know there's many many videos on YouTube that are fantastic for tutorials so have a look at this if you like it have a go and if you want to try something else gosh go ahead it's absolutely fine um, so today I'm using a size 6 brush I'm going just a little bit smaller um, because what we're going to be doing is we're going to be using a technique that I learnt years ago off an artist called Alec Krylo or Krylo I'm really sorry I'm not quite sure if I've got the pronunciation right where he did this grid system and what we did for each colour that joins up in that box we would do a gradual look at what happens when you mix the colours in varying amounts because I know that a lot of you ask me about well the subtleties of mixing two colours together so let's get started let's not let's not jabber on anymore so um, if you watched my episode 4 about the basics of mixing you know that we start off by waking up the colour and putting it into an empty well of the palette. So yet again, as in episode four, I am using the De La Rowney Aquafine Travel Kit, which is a student quality watercolour, so it's not the finest quality, it's not what I use for my commissions, but it is absolutely fantastic for beginners and I really rate it for this kind of thing. So we have 12 colours, which is a basic set and I'm here to show you today that you don't need to go out and buy a whole load more. You've got nearly every colour at your fingertips. Okay, so we've got the lemon yellow up here and I've got cobalt blue down the side. So I've gone for the three blue colours down one side and the earthier tones along the next. So I'm going to pop cobalt blue and just need to wake it up with some water. that is going to go in my palette alongside the lemon yellow. And, oh no, I just got a drop. But we're starting to get a tiny mix. So I'm gonna bring the blue up to the yellow. And we're just gonna get the tiniest bit of yellow that's been affected by the blue and do a little line. And then we're gonna draw in a little bit more now, the yellow is so delicate that it's going to end up becoming affected quite quickly. But let's see how we go. So we're just bringing a little bit more colour. And I'm not adding any more water from the jar into my mix because I want this mix to have a consistent amount of colour value. Now colour value is all about light and shade. So the more water you add, the lighter the colour becomes and it has a lighter value to it. So let's get a bit more of that blue in there to play. So we're getting a beautiful range of green tones 
which is fantastic because we've only got one green in this set. A bit more blue in there. And let's see, we've got space for about two more. Get our blue really in there. Oh, beautiful. And finally, full amount of blue into our mixture. And that, I find, is a much more useful colour chart for me, just to see all the potential of those two colours. When I'm doing a colour chart with just the single swatches of each colour, I'm like, oh, but I don't know if there's something in between that I need to find. And so for me, that's an absolute winner. So we'll carry on down here, and we're gonna go for lemon yellow again. Now we need to find a, a clean area of the palette. Luckily, this little De La Rowney, Rowney travel set is fab because it's got a few compartments, which is a big enough for us to try out this experimental wash. So I've got a big floopy jumper on today, which is probably um, getting in the way. Right, Prussian blue. A, a more intense blue than cobalt. A colder blue, in my opinion. Um, I'm self-taught and I remember when I was writing the book, New Botanical Painting, I was looking at colour theory and things, I've always been very instinctive and um, I really wanted to explain about colour theory but about warm and cold tones of watercolour. Right, here we go. Drop a little bit of that in there. Oh, already that is quite green. Um, but I've always sort of gone a bit, I don't know, I go a bit blank when people start talking about warm and cold colours in watercolour because I don't necessarily see it every time. Um, and I just wanted to let you know that if you've been a bit bamboozled by too much theory when it comes to learning watercolours, um, don't worry, I feel exactly the same, to be honest. Wow, look at that green, that's amazing. It's always amazed by colour. Right, so I'm bringing more blue in. And we're just starting to get a sort of, well, a little bit more of a, an aqua. Well, not aqua, but it's just a bluer green, isn't it? Like a little pine forest. Okay, in more. Mix it in. And let's get it all in there. I think someone's flying a hang glider outside. Okay, lovely bluey tones. So we've got lemon yellow one last time at the bottom and we've got Payne's Grey here, which is an amazing inky color. It's not quite black, it's not quite blue. It's kind of cool, okay clean brush. We've got loads of water in the palette, we don't need much more so let's let's just try and get the tiniest touch of Payne's Grey, whoops, into the yellow and see what we've got. A little bit more. This is kind of a fun exercise to do on a Sunday afternoon. We're filming this on a Sunday afternoon. Sunday's kind of become our filming day. Um, which is quite nice. This is also um, being filmed during uh, the sort of easing out of lockdown as well. So that's why it's kind of a nice time to maybe take up a new hobby, to be honest, because we've all got a little bit more time at home. And the other thing is, even if you don't have much more time at home, watercolour is just the most amazingly relaxing hobby. And I really think if you can find something that makes you feel good and relaxed at a time like this, then I think that's a rather good idea. And the good thing is going forward in years to come when people are watching this and looking back, this will be like a little record of a rather important time in history, goodness me. So the other nice thing about doing this little exercise, I've got a little bit of time to just sort of get to know you guys a bit better. Um, I... Um, fairly new 
to YouTube and the YouTube world. And I've just been really thrilled with how welcoming you guys have all been. And I just want to say thank you because getting all your comments is amazing. It, it really helps me know that I'm doing something right. Um, okay, so we've done our journey from lemon yellow through the various tones and you can just see like the amazing range and the lovely blues that you get oh I think that's gorgeous so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to squeegee my palette so I'm going to get a bit of kitchen roll and just clean this up that's not bad is it and we can start again. And the water, although it's looking fairly green, it's all good because we're still on a similar tone of color. So we're now going into this sort of, it looks like cadmium yellow, but it isn't. It is called Gamboge Hue. I'll get a nice bit on the watercolor brush and we'll keep going. So yeah, so, um, I am much more of a regular on Instagram stories, which is where I started filming my paintings and chatting away to people, which was so cool. And I really got to know uh, my audience who really enjoyed my witterings. Um, <laughs> and half the people were on there to learn how to paint and half the people were just keen to just sit and watch some paint go on the page. And it is quite a nice thing to watch. Um, I've done it myself. I I like watching people ice biscuits. <laughs> That's my weird thing. I'm sure we've all got one. Okay, so cobalt blue on the side. Make sure your brush is nice and clean when you pick up the new colour. Mine wasn't 100% clean. So we're probably going to get a very similar um, set of results here but it's all about the subtleties of the difference because this yellow is just a bit more warm than the lemon yellow so let's see how we go I'm just gonna block my brush off a little bit and get a bit more of the yellow okay here we go Ooh. Draw a bit more of the blue in. And we're getting some lovely yellowy warm green tones. They're not quite as zesty as the lemon yellow. Let's draw more blue into there. Mix it up nicely. Nice. So yeah, I um, specialize in botanical, or I've called it new botanical painting because true botanical studies are the most incredible detailed scientific works of art that take months, maybe years to complete sometimes. And that is definitely not what I do. I am nowhere near that, but I do love to paint plants and flowers. I'm a flower painter basically. And I just love painting in a fairly loose style that's also really really respectful of the anatomy of a plant and flower so I think that's probably the difference between me and your classic kind of loose watercolor artist I suppose is I will paint really closely according to the basic structure of the plant and flower but because it's in a loose style we manage to achieve it a lot sooner you know you get results a lot quicker but because we've been really sort of um, close adhering and honest to the sort of structure of the plant and flower it will always look correct even though it's got a lovely amount of character to it I think I got a little bit of a bobble on the end of my brush there we go all good now we're going to go for Prussian blue and yeah so I have been um, writing this book, New Botanical Painting, for the past few years, and it came out in October last year, and it's been the most amazing experience for me. I've never written a book before, I never set out to write a book, um, but I've been really grateful to have that opportunity to actually 
be able to put down my thoughts about watercolour painting into a book and honestly it made me a far better painter because of it and I think not that we're all setting out to write our own book on watercolour painting but anyone who dabbles in watercolour the best piece of advice I can give you is practice because I sat and practiced every flower for weeks on end and I oh god the number of proteas I painted I can't tell you um actually I can it was 48 um and even then I was still learning by the last one but you learn so much each time you just repeat yourself and try again and here's a little bit of inside info um episode four we I uh, sort of sat down and filmed it, got to the end and realised that my husband hadn't pressed record. <laughs> so um, we had to do it all over again. But actually, I think the second time round was better. Now, I feel like I've actually gotten to a point with this one that I'm now, I've used up all the blue. Shall I add a little bit more in? See what, let's get even more blue. Yeah, there we go. So we've got a really dominant blue now in there mixed in with the yellow. Mix that all up. Oh, that's nice. Let's see if we get even more blue. Lovely. Okay, keeping going. Time for Payne's Grey. So clean that brush off. And here we go. Now I was considering doing a time lapse of this video and um, I know some people love a time lapse and I've got to say when I'm watching somebody maybe I don't know like decorate a room or hmm, yeah like wallpaper a wall or something I absolutely love a time lapse but for me the whole point of watercolour is that we slow down a bit don't you think and for me just to be able to spend like 15-20 minutes painting and chatting to you guys and getting to know you a bit more. I don't really want to do a time lapse. Saying that, we might find that this becomes such a long video that we we maybe cut a little bit in the middle and just edit to the end. But let's see how we go. That's an interesting colour. It's just a slightly like murky, greeny, greeny yellow. Okay. A little bit more. And this is just going to be such a handy guide for me when I come to paint, gosh, anything really. I can just quickly look over and go, aha, that stone works, this colour, that's this and that. And even though I'm not sort of saying this is an exact precise amount of this many grams of Payne's grey to this many grams of gamboge hue. I've got a sense that it's sort of, uh, say somewhere along here in the middle, I've got a, a decent mix of the yellow and the Payne's grey, as opposed to at the beginning where, where we've just got the tiniest touch going in. Okay, come on, let's get a bit more involved here. Let's now really overpower the yellow. Amazing. Okay, so now it is time to change our water because we are moving from yellows onto red and the red I've got here is cadmium red. Another bit of kitchen roll and let's clean up our palette. the home straight and it's time for burnt sienna okay so mixing that up oh dear it looks pretty though doesn't it um and it's great you can see now for anyone who was wondering who was worried maybe that um not having every color down both side 
um, would mean we wouldn't see a full range of colours. I think you can see that we've got pretty much everything we need here. And so it just goes to show that even with this simple little set of 12, I'm just going to get a bit more burnt sienna actually, there we go. Simple little set of 12. We've just got so many colours and it's all down to just giving it a bit of time to mix. Okay, so let's get this last one done then, shall we? It's really, it's been really like lovely and therapeutic for me as well, just watching as the colours gradually morph as we go down the page. Um, and uh, yeah, I think if you're doing this at home and you sort of get halfway down your, your column, your section, and you sort of think, oh, I, I don't actually feel like the colour's going to change much more, that's absolutely fine. You can stop when you feel is appropriate. But the best thing about this is it's going to get you really feeling confident with taking water from the jar, paint from the pans, and, and mixing it about in the palette. And I know that sounds really basic but um, you'd be surprised how many people are actually quite scared of of doing all of that and they're very very timid with taking paint and then taking water and then you end up sort of dry brushing your way across the page this is all building up confidence because we're so close to actually painting something fun and getting away from exercises it all feels a bit like school doesn't it Okay, and last, can we get any more blue out of that? Lovely. I actually think my favourite set of colours is the browns with the blues. I think that's a really cool colour palette. Right, um, so burnt sienna again. And um, the other thing, which is a useful tip for you to know, um, however clean your fingers are, because I always wash my hands before painting and I don't eat or drink whilst I'm painting. Well, no, I usually have a cup of tea, but I don't eat anything because the tiniest bit of grease can get on your fingers and um, make even a little bit of sweat, I think, on your fingertips just makes little sort of areas on the page that you touch a little bit more resistant to watercolour paint. So you can almost see my little fingertips just there. So that's a really handy tip is you do need to be careful about touching the page uh, as in not touching the page too much. Okay, here we go. The first line I do has the such a minuscule amount of the mix colour in with it. You can barely see it. Okay, here we go, a little bit more, a bit more. And we're getting into the realms of all the shadow mixes as well, aren't we here? That I talked about in episode four last week. And as we go cooler and cooler in tone, but not adding any more water. So all of these colours across the whole page have been done with the same concentration of paint and water was well, as similar as I can get it but you sort of get a feel for it in the palette. Any more blue in there? Lovely. Okay one more to go. Clean that brush off and also do blot it on the kitchen roll that is what it's for just to make sure you are trying to get as uh, true a representation of the colour as possible. And once you've done this, you won't need to do it again. <laughs> I'll be grateful to know. Um, because you can have this up on your wall or in your little area where you paint um, or in a folder somewhere that you can get out and just have a little look and refer to it. Um, you could also write the names of the colours but if you are using a set of pans like this then you should be able to know god look at all that colour that's coming out of the brush there just get all of it off really get that off there we go oh lovely see it makes a difference if you blot the brush out 
and the last one see yeah this corner of the page is probably the most kind of touched so after a while it, it really does start to become a bit resistant but that's okay we can still see our colors my size six brush I think has been pretty perfect there's only been one time where I had a, a, a sort of blend that I really didn't want to happen well there's the turning point in this in this one the Payne's grey starting to take hold so yeah the usually with the Payne's grey I get to the point of the last three where it's all kind of the same colour if you're not looking too closely but we are looking closely we want to know we want to see so and last one mixed all in oh there we go do you want to know something funny as I can't count? <laughs> I tried to calculate how many little channels I needed. I always struggle with that. Anyway, here we go. We have a colour chart, uh, De Winton Paper Co style. Um, I think this will just give you everything you could possibly need. A quick reference, go here to here, this, this colour and that colour, and having a look at which shade you need. Um, I really love this so I hope you do too and I hope that maybe you have a lovely relaxing few hours. I think this took me about an hour and a half to do in total so you know enjoy it. The whole point of watercolour is to relax into it and take your time. Whew, that was a bit of a marathon but I hope you can see once more that the mighty £12 travel set is really amazing in terms of potential for watercolour mixes. Uh, right so that's another one done if you've enjoyed the video hit the like button and I love getting your comments so put those below and of course hit the subscribe button if you haven't already you're not going to see what coming, what's coming next. So uh, yeah, hit subscribe and we'll see you again soon. Bye.